All right, so we're talking about the Republicans. Well, all right, the Republican nominee, I know we know it's Donald Trump, so I'll just say it. I watched the acceptance speech that he gave, and it was a long speech. I, I actually, I was thinking to myself, this must be the longest speech I've ever heard. And it turns out it was the longest. It turns out it was the longest. But what I found interesting was that it was almost as an afterthought that taxation and regulation were mentioned as bad things. Oh, and by the way, I should mention that if we seize your stuff and, you know, smack you around a bit, that may also be disrupting production. Yes, yes, that's the thing. Well, <laughs> Why was that, why did we get 75 seconds of that and 75 minutes of something else? But to me, they, I think these kind of are sort of important, important issues. The key, one of the key aspects of the speech seemed to be that if we get inexpensive goods, this is a bad thing. And I'm, you know, I, I, again, this is another thing that everybody brings up, but it, it's brought up all the time because it's so darn good. And that is, if you haven't read it, you've got to read the Frederick Bastiat Petition of the Candlemakers. Now, I almost want to say how many people haven't read that, but who's going to raise his hand for that? Oh, I haven't read it. <laughs> I don't want to put people on the spot like that, but just, just know that I have a funny feeling which ones in here haven't, so get to it, all right? It's great. The petition of the candlemakers, of course, is satirical, and in there you have these candlemakers who are petitioning the government for relief because they're saying, look, there's this terrible competitor out there we can't, who's totally unfair in his competition. How can we possibly compete with this guy? We're producing light for people. You know how important that is. Where would you be without light, for heaven's sake? And meanwhile, we got this totally unfair competitor who's dumping light on the people for free, and you may know him as the sun. So we propose that people be required to shutter up their windows and keep out this awful, unwanted gift of nature so that they can instead buy candles to light their homes. Now, when it's put that way, you say, well, that would be stupid to expend resources on something that's being given away, you know, for free. So why would we do that? But in some way, that is what every protectionist argument boils down to, every single one. They all boil down to that at some level. Oh my goodness, protect us from the fact that now people's incomes can stretch a lot farther to buy a lot more of the things that they want. I want their incomes not to stretch as much. And by the way, as somebody with five children, I can tell you that it is a good thing that you can get, uh, you know, like a to toddler pajamas for five or six bucks now. Instead of 30 bucks, you know, we used to be ripped off in the past, and now I'm supposed to be saying, boo-hoo-hoo, I so wish I could get ripped off when I buy baby pajamas, but unfortunately, I have to get a bargain. <laughs> why would I think that way? And why would I want to sign a petition? Yep, you know, you're darn right. It would make us better if we imposed a sales tax on baby pajamas. Then we would be richer. That can't be. That can't be. We would not be richer if the government takes more money away from us. That makes us poorer. If I have fewer choices than I had before, if I have fewer choices than I had before, that makes me poorer. Now, there are a lot of, a lot of more, a lot more things that can be said in the free trade debate, uh, certainly. I had Bob and Vox Day on my podcast uh, not too long ago, and they had a debate on, on free trade, and I want to continue that uh, as soon as Bob becomes available sometime in the year 2021. We'll, we'll, we'll try and get back to that. But at least, I mean, these are some basic thoughts. In other words, the point here is that the argument really is that government is not really the problem. The problem is that consumers have been spending their money in, in ways that we would rather that they not spend it. So that's the kind of message that's been sent. Now, Ben Shapiro is a conservative writer I don't much care for. The other day, he's all up in arms, oh my heavens, Donald Trump is destroying the Republican Party because now, look, we have a party where the nominee barely even mentions the Constitution. He doesn't mention conservatism. He doesn't really talk about the free market. And so what, what Ben prefers, apparently, is a party where they talk about the Constitution all the time. They talk about the free market all the time. They talk about conservatism all the time. And then they spend all their time violating the Constitution and screwing the free market. That, that's what he likes. So he'd rather they talk a whole lot about it and then do nothing, as opposed to somebody who's at least honest that he's not going to do anything, man. I, you know, I slightly prefer the honesty, if you ask me. You know, I mean, in a way, it's like what Malcolm X said about the 1964 election. He says he prefers Goldwater, because at least Goldwater is up front with him. 
whereas uh, Lyndon Johnson is obviously a snake who's never going to tell you the truth. So, all right, well, I'll take that. All right, and then the, the basic message is we need different people in charge because the other people in charge haven't done it right. Okay, but maybe the problem is the it that they're doing. Maybe we don't need people doing this it to, to start with. And in particular, if I need people doing that it, they would not be Newt Gingrich, Chris Christie, or Rudy Giuliani. They wouldn't. Those would not be the first people I would think of for anything, except world's most annoying people. <laughs> Although I will say, Chris Christie taking down Marco Rubio, I can forgive a lot for somebody who could do that. <laughs> 